Every year we test hundreds of products at SoundGuys. We develop a specific measurement process for each type of product we review. And today I'll be talking about how we test headphones. But first, why do we test headphones? There are plenty of places you can read about other people's opinions of how things sound. What SoundGuys strives to do is show you how each product differs in terms of its measured audio performance. We test headphones using a standardized process to produce reliable, objective data. Objective data makes comparing products easier, and this is part of our mission at SoundGuys, to help you make the right buying decision. While there are numerous review sites that focus only on the high end, or what the headphone hobbyist community is interested in, which are largely the wired, over-ear and in-ear monitor categories, SoundGuys covers the gamut of what's out there in the world of headphones. We test and review all kinds of headphones, over-ears, on-ears and in-ears. This includes everything from the most inexpensive wired earbuds to the latest full-featured true wireless hearable type products via all kinds of Bluetooth niche products for runners, gym goers and commuters through to over-ear headphones for critical listening. And of course, the expansive and increasingly innovative world of headsets designed for gamers, which connect using multiple protocols, including USB or proprietary RF dongles and base stations. We quantify all of these using our standard test strategy, so the data can be directly compared across all of these product categories. Everything is kept consistent so that by using output multiplexing and signal switching from the analysis PC, we can test any of the products that come through our door in the same way. We needed a reliable method to match the loudness of each headphone's output for a few reasons. AB listening tests must be fair and measurements should also be made at a comparable loudness level. Simply level matching at a single frequency does not achieve this. Since headphones that include active electronics or DSP can include all manner of signal processing, such as loudness control, equalization, compressors and limiting, it's necessary to first use a test signal with similar characteristics to typical music, but is steady state in nature. Our chosen method uses a simulated program source stimulus, measured using standalone loudness level meters that measure according to EBU R128. Using this technique, we can be sure that each headphone is driven at a level that would sound equivalent to a person listening, according to the standard. We measure headphone frequency responses using IEC 602687 as a guide. The left and right channels are tested in sequence so we can assess inter-channel crosstalk. We also log data on inter-channel variation, distortion and latency. We distill our findings down to as few charts as possible for presentation in our reviews including typically one single frequency response chart to illustrate the playback behavior of the product. All our published frequency responses are uncompensated with left and right measurements presented as a single averaged curve with smoothing applied. This makes the charts easy to read on any device and allows us to present comparison charts allowing readers to easily compare products. As we know, headphones should be properly measured using either quality microphones inside actual human ears or using accurate electroacoustic ear simulators specifically as part of an artificial head such as the b k 5128. Testing on a realistic head is an important part of creating realistic usage conditions, particularly for any of the headband mounted headphones, where the band must be stretched to a suitable head size to produce the correct pressure on the ear pad or on the ear itself. Since a headphone's response measured at or close to the eardrum should include the approximate features of the head-related transfer function to sound natural or correct, this makes interpreting the measured data when published in a magazine or a website a bit more complex than it is with a free-field measurement of a loudspeaker, for example. Rather than attempt to modify the preference curve produced by Dr. Olive's team at Harman, we sought to develop our own target curve. We selected a group of benchmark products and used the measured data to produce a single response chart. Here's what that exercise produced. So far we've found this target works quite well and we've stood by it. To objectively test the performance of ANC headphones, we use our Bruel & Kea Type 5128 test head to provide a repeatable test platform that represents the average listener. 
The headphones are placed on the test head and are then exposed to a burst of shaped pink noise at a calibrated level that corresponds to 90 dB SPL, measured at the eardrum of the test head with no headset present. A measurement is then taken by the analysis software to calculate how much the noise is attenuated by the active noise cancellation. We also use this same sound field to quantify the headphone's passive isolation without ANC enabled. Thanks for joining me for this overview of our headphone testing methodology. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below if there's anything you'd like to see in future videos. I'm AJ Wikes with Sound Guys. Happy listening.